Ribbon Content presents Batman the Audio Adventures. Every time it rains, it rains. Pennies from heaven. Shooby dooby. Alfred brings the supper down at a quarter to seven. Do 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 do. Oh, that smells delicious, Alfred. You've outdone yourself. Why, thank you, Master Bruce. <laughs> I mean, it's simply lambstock. Retinal scan complete. At last, certainly took your input voice identification code for back cave access. Authorization Alfred one. Recognized. Marvelous. This tray is heavy, though, so please be kind enough to open. Access denied. I beg your pardon. Access denied. Let me in, you ridiculous contrivance, before Master Bruce's soup gets cold. It's difficult enough getting him to eat without. When is a door not a door? What? Who changed the voice interface protocol? When is a door not a door? Mm, Riddler. Incorrect. When is a door not a door? Ugh, when it's a jar. Every schoolboy knows that. Incorrect. What? Correct answer. When is a door not a door? When you can't get it open. You imbecile. Intruder alert. Back cave anti-personnel directives. Charging. Oh, well, the soup is certainly going cold now. Gotham, a city that spans the full distance between hell and high water. Join us again for a tale of life and death in Gotham City. As Alfred has just learned, the house he keeps is under siege. By distracting Batman with a threat of a catastrophic gas attack on the Wayne Foundation building, the nefarious Riddler was able to trace Batman's electronic signal back to the Batcave. From his remote location, the obnoxious Inquisitor now has complete computer control of the Batman's hidden headquarters. Well, Batman, I'm really all out of small talk with you. And we still have minutes to go until I calculate your secret location. No, don't you worry. The trace is run, 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 running. Robin. He's system-wide, Batman. Ah, to kill the time. Do you have any games on this thing? Restore perimeter security. No good. He is the Batcave right now, Batman. We couldn't turn on the radio down here if he didn't want it. Oh, but I do. Oh, that's a groovy idea, boy wonder. Let's see what's in your music files while we wait, Batman. <laughs> nope. Batman, this is the music collection of a dude who does not get it. Batman, <laughs> the system core. No time. Oh, 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 here we go. Perfect, Maestro. A little on hold music, please. When I samba right in your front door, I'm so going to enjoy watching the look on the lower half of your face, Batman. Just don't forget, you'd better watch your ears, Eddie. What? What did you say, Mumbles? I said, Batmobile jamming frequency. You forced him out! Briefly, that bought us 60 seconds, maybe less. But at least I shut him up for the moment. Whoa, good thinking, Batman. Riddler has full control of the Batcave systems, but the car has an independent computer core. He's compensating as we speak, but I have a plan. Better be quick, Batman. Riddler's trace is still running. He's almost found us. Riddler is mounting his assault on the Batcave from inside the Wayne Foundation mainframe. He thinks he's safe in there because he's locked Batman and Robin out. But luckily for us, Bruce Wayne is already inside. Of course! You personally tweaked the Wayne Foundation code, but Riddler couldn't know that. Riddler won't expect another user to log in at this access point, which I can do using Bruce Wayne's passwords and clearance. Wayne Foundation. Bruce Wayne. Authorize. Bruce Wayne will run a background trace on Riddler while Riddler's preoccupied with Batman. But that'll take at least a minute, Batman. And he's nearly back in. You'll need to distract him for... Covering that now, Robin. Just follow me. <laughs> okay, you got me. I forgot about your tacky-ass car. <laughs> you do know where the car is concerned. You're totally that guy, right? Well, no worries. I'm back in control, and I almost have your location. Robin, quickly encrypt these files, old chum. 
Oh, no, 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 you don't bet, man. You think you got skills? Girl, you don't know about my skills. Decryption opens the files. Now then, let's see what's so important. Oh, nice. Too late, Robin. We're too late. I see why you wanted to keep this to yourself. Oh, this file must be a page turner. Hmm, fascinating. The Batman's personal case file dossiers on all his colorful adversaries. Look at this list of luminaries. Well, there's Catwoman's file and Mr. Freeze and... Aha! There I am. Oh, I'm so very curious what pedestrian insights you've recorded during our spirited rival. What the... What's the matter, Riddler? My file. It's puny. 1.2 gigs? Oh, that can't be right. Yeah, I regret you have to find out like this. It's like one-fifth the size of the Joker's file. Well, Joker is A-list. Oh, you can eat my ass, Cape Crusader. I'm A-list all day long. That clown is a hack comedian with a philosophy degree from Gotham Community College. Not the general consensus of law enforcement professionals, Riddler. Sorry. I... But look at Matt Hatter. He's literally just a crazy guy who wears a f***ing hat. His file's twice the size of mine. The truth is, you just don't keep Gotham City up at night. That is a lie, a fat lie. You're a pinhead liar, is what you... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This... This file isn't even about me at all. That's right, Riddler. While I was pretending to encrypt the dossiers, I swapped the names on your file with a two-bit nobody named Killer Moth. Killer... Croc? No, Killer Moth. Who the hell is Killer Moth? He's an idiot, but you just blundered into my ego trap. What does that make you? So childish. You're an infant. I can always count on you to judge a book by its cover, Riddler. Especially when the cover has your name on it. Thanks. You gave me just enough time. That is not possible. There's no way you traced my... Have a look. Now I'm in your mainframe, Riddler. I see you've got a Cayman Islands account. How original. Almost as original as Riddler debuting well after a very famous Joker. Oh, you didn't just. Honestly, how dare you? Riddles and jokes are fundamentally different concepts. Let's drain those funds. Don't you do it. It's done. Now you can keep running your trace on the Batcave. But I've moved on to deleting your entire data cache. All your puzzles, all your riddles, all your life's work. It'll be gone by the time you find me. No, no, that's my art, you meat-headed clod! We have ourselves a game of chicken, Riddler. Bail out or lose everything. Oh, curse you, Batman! You win again! You went through! We've got control back! Computer, restore full security protocols. Maximum encryption. Wow, Batman. That was entirely too close. He almost got in. He did get in, as far as I'm concerned. Riddler's upped his game. And what's worse, I chipped at his brittle ego without putting him down. Look out. He's going to be increasingly desperate to seize the attention he craves. This book of riddles is in its final chapter. How will it end? That is the final riddle of life and death in Gotham City. He's got a laffy daffy nose. He's got flappy whopper feet. He's got car payments, people. Child support. Take pity on the poor schmuck. He's Blabbo the birthday clown. And none of the Joker stuff has anything to do with him. How many ways can we say that? Well, here's one more. Blabbo the birthday clown is running a special promotion. He's knocking on random doors 
And if he chooses your home, you win a free party with Blabbo. So if you see an unfamiliar clown poking around your neighborhood, don't call the police. Let him in. It's probably just Blabbo. Blabbo the birthday clown. He's a disillusioned clown. He went to college to be a clown. That used to count for something. Blabbo the birthday clown. The only thing he'll kill is you with his antics. There, that should fix things. I think so. Gotham. Deception is just the tip of the iceberg. Join us now for another tale of life and death in Gotham City. February 12th. Hours away from the start of the Ice Age Gala, and we rejoin our adventures in a darkened vault deep in the chilly bowels of the Penguin's Iceberg Casino. It is home to a grotesque accumulation of gilded treasures and moth-eaten taxidermy. The precious hoarded trash of a pampered fiend. Almost. Almost. She promised Two-Face she'd cause a disruption at the gala to spite Oswald Cobblepot, but Catwoman, secretly working with ace reporter Vicky Vale to bring down the mayor, is really here for the safe she just cracked. Baby. Hey, Miss Uptown, I'm in. You were right. Big fat envelope labeled Mayor Hill. That's helpful. Ready for the moment of truth. It's documents, photos, scientific stuff. There's a file. Says Ace Chemical. Catwoman has just subdued 11 guards handpicked from a paramilitary private security firm. She deactivated countless silent alarms and laser grids on the way to the Penguin's trove of lucre. But this moment is the first this evening that her pulse has quickened. What am I looking at? Yes, that Ace Chemical. The huge pharmaceutical conglomerate in the Narrows. The mayor is helping them cover up something called... Project Joy Cure? What the hell is Project Joy Cure? <laughs> Suddenly, the sharp snap of a switch, and the room is bathed in harsh electric light. Well, well, Catwoman. Looking for dirt on the mayor? I little suspected you were the political type. <laughs> Catwoman's momentary surprise gives way to a smile. <laughs> the penguin has caught her red-handed, but he is without his muscle-bound major domo, Mr. De Condor, or any other security. Well, I little suspected you were the masochistic type. Shouldn't confront an intruder alone, Oswald. Single worst thing you can do in a home invasion. Now take your beating like a man. And I promise to punch like a girl. Oh, Catwoman, please! Don't move a muscle! I like to hear you beg, Oswald. You're truly vile. No, I mean it, Catwoman. You're just about to trip my burglar alarm. <laughs> nice try. Actually, no, it's not. I took care of all your crummy burglar alarms, and if that's the best you got, I should have robbed you along. <laughs> yes! To Catwoman's shock, one monstrous specimen she took for dusty taxidermy is actually a very live predator with a razor beak and a six-foot wingspan. The massive bird wings its way to its master, who offers a morsel of goat kidney from his oily palm. Ah, good girl, Upsippity. <laughs> Catwoman picks herself off the ground, slowly. <sighs> and I thought you were a hefty bird, Oswald. <laughs> what wit! You know in tales of mighty myth, a massive raptor much like this one devoured the liver of poor Prometheus every night. While he watched. Isn't that interesting? And all he did was steal fire from the gods! 
So when we're throwing out pitches for what to do to you, Catwoman, the liver-eating thing is the idea to beat. All right? Killer Croc owes me a favor. <laughs> but just as Penguin advances with his Talon Sentinel... Oh, Ozzy, that's a nice bird. Startled, the Great Eagle flies from the room as Two-Face enters, lowering a smoking gun barrel. Oh, no, it flew the coop. So are we too late to get our ticket for the Ice Age Gala? <laughs> Two-Face? Harvey, thank you. You're just in time. <laughs> we ain't here to save you, kitty cat. We'll deal with you later, after him and us talk. The bird who likes bombs. Now, Harvey, you're probably a bit peaked with me, but don't go off half cocked here. Oh, right, right, thanks. You gotta cock both barrels of this old beauty. Huh? Now then, I didn't get the eagle, but I think I can still score me a birdie. Now, Harvey, be reasonable. Please, what the fuck am I begging you? Not gonna consider a plea agreement at this time, Penguin. We nearly drowned. What do you want me to do? I get on my knees? I'm doing it, look! I'm down on my knees, man. Just, oh, None of you need me. I've got a tad husky. Hold my umbrella, would you, Harvey? Hey, what are you? What did you stick me with? The penguin leaps to his feet with terrifying agility for one so oily and gelatinous as Two-Face feels the burning sting of a puncture wound in his thigh. Indeed, Two-Face reels, but Hef's his enormous firearm nevertheless. Still gonna shoot ya. Bye-bye, Bernie! Whoop, that's the chandelier. Take a mulligan, Harvey, old boy. And while you're teeing up, Harvey, I want you to answer me honestly. Uh, this uh, is something I have to know. Do you, in any way, blame me for what happened? Eat lead. What, Mr. Gunn? <laughs> because in fairness, I only paid to have you disfigured for life. I got you losing your marbles for free. <laughs> now you're a legal type. <laughs> Since I only contracted the tragedy that ruined you. Really, that's just white collar crime, isn't it? <laughs> Can we settle out of court? <laughs> Stay still. Stay still! Oh. Harvey, I'm not moving, old boy! You are! Uh. Uh. <laughs> Harvey, I haven't seen a worse shot since I judged the Gazette's teenage photography competition! Oh, I am saucy tonight! Ah. And that is the sound of an empty revolver! Catwoman is, is getting away, you... Let her go! She's getting away with nothing but an eye for Indeed, Catwoman is presently diving off the casino's roof and into Gotham Harbor per a hastily improvised escape plan. But she escapes with nothing more than an address and the enigmatic name Project Joy Cure. Why are you doing this to us? You're dying to know, aren't you? <laughs> well, I'll tell you. You're a disaster, Harvey. But somewhere in there is an absolutely brilliant legal mind, and I want it playing for my iceberg organization. You think we're gonna work for you after what you... Not work for me, Harvey. With me. I'm your biggest fan. I respect you so much it makes me do loony things, like hatch this plan to prove to you that you need me. What are you saying? I need you? Desperate. Look how easily you're provoked. I threaten to blow up a little import-export business and you fold like a two-dollar bill. You need protection from yourself! Uh, uh, uh. I propose an alliance. A beautiful symbiosis, Harvey. 
I can benefit from your brilliant legal mind while I help you stay out of your own way. Literally. You want to team up? Precisely. Maybe. Yeah. The coin. The coin's been trying to tell us something. I don't know what it wants. I'm certain it wants to get you the help you need, old egg. You need me. So what do you say, Harv? No hard feelings, man. Gotta... Gotta... Ask the coin. Succumbing to the venom, Two-Face produces his talisman and sends it spinning weakly. Good side. Nope. No hard feelings. So, are we partners? What do you say, coin? Good side. Yep. You got it. We're partners now, Ozzy. We don't argue with the coin. I gotta take a nap now. Wake us up and... Jeez. Sorry you'll sleep through the gala, Harv, but you need your rest. We have so much work to do, running all of Gotham. <laughs> Just you and you and me. I can almost hear the criminal underworld whispering fearfully already. Penguin and Two-Face Consolidated Enterprises. Unlimited. <laughs> You've heard the one about good intentions. When Batman swapped Harvey's coin for a rigged fake, his intention was to promote harmony in the mind of a man at war with himself. But in an unforeseeable twist of fate, he is instead promoting harmony between two master criminals. What will this poisonous partnership yield? More tales of life and death in Gotham City. Gotham Harbor Cannery, Quality Care Department. This is Maurice. Well, hi there, Maurice. I'm Joe. It's my pleasure to assist you, Joe. What's your problem? I got this number from the label on a large can of chunk white tuna in oil. Weighs about two pounds. I see, sir. Is it unsatisfactory? It's the Tasty Tony Tuna brand chunk white tuna. The one with the cartoon fish on the label. I'm familiar with it, sir. Do you have an issue? Yeah. How am I supposed to feel about this cartoon fish? What? Is that Tasty Tony himself? Is he good with that nickname? Does he even know what he's advertising? I wouldn't think so. He looks pretty happy on that label. Sir, I'm not certain what... Or maybe he's some kind of Piscine psychopath. Is that it? Is Tasty Tony Tuna a mental deviant? Look at him. Is Tony getting off on me eating this fish? Sir, what is the nature of your complaint? Oh, no complaint. I always call the phone numbers I find on cans. Sir, is the tuna fish not good? I don't know. I haven't opened it. I'm just putting a couple of cans in a sock to bludgeon you with if you're not cooperative. I'm in a real hurry. What? Yeah, sorry. Uh, this is the Joker. I'm coming down the hall. Your cannery has a twin spinning galvanized autoclave and I need to borrow it for the big show I'm working up. If I can sneak in a plug, it's called Dark Purple Dawn. And it opens this Valentine's Day all over Gotham City. See you real soon, Maurice. If there's a survey after this call, you'll get high marks. Oh my god! Ladies and gentlemen of Gotham City, Oswald C. Cobblepot proudly welcomes you to Gotham's Glacier of Glitz and Glamour, the Iceberg Casino, for the annual Ice Age Gala. Won't you come along with me? Put on your finest finery. The iceberg's throwing us water. 
to that funeral dirge? Girls, I'm begging you. The guests start arriving in less than an hour, and where are the smiles, girls? The Cassowary Sisters trio I know has big, bright smiles. Yes, 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 you miss your sister, Midge. We all miss Midge. But though we are a family, this is a business. And if you lack sufficient enthusiasm, you will be sacked just like Midge was. And that's not the worst part, girls. It gets really unpleasant when the sack comes off. Then it's nothing to stare at but the river while they mix up cement. Told it's excruciating. Look, you'll wish the sack was back on. So smiles, everyone. Smiles from the top, please. Uh, Mr. Copperpot, sir. What? Finchley, must you croak in my ear? I'm very sorry, Mr. Copperpot. <coughs> Take five, girls. But I expect to see teeth tonight, my chickadees. Mr. Cobblepot, we have a problem. Celeste Delmonico's RSVP was lost in the mail. The ping pong ball lady? No, oh, I like the ping pong ball lady. <laughs> well, she's coming and there's no room. It's not a problem, Finchley. But we have not one seat left at the banquet. The dining room is at capacity. I planned for something like this, you sniveling prawn. When the banquet begins, seat Miss Delmonico at the bar and give her a creme de violette. Tell her you'll return in ten minutes and escort her to her choice of seats. But, but how? Give me that seating shot, you rancid smell -pur. See here, I have set Judge Cheney next to Frenchie Blake. You see? I, I, I... The judge is a fossilized old buzzard. And he surely won't remember he sent Frenchie to Blackgate. But naturally, Frenchie hasn't thought of anything else since a pound of butter cost a dime. Meanwhile, across the table, Frenchie Blake doesn't know it, but Maxie Zeus is busy playing footsie with Mrs. Frenchie Blake, with whom he's been dallying since poor Frenchie went up the river. So, without fail, Judge Cheney will raise Frenchie's ire. Frenchie will take a swing at Judge Cheney. Mrs. Blake will protest. Frenchie will rebuke Mrs. Blake, and Maxie Zeus will defend her honor. One way or another, either Maxie or Frenchie goes down in the scrum. I've taken down a competitor, and as a bonus, I've sent a bribe-resistant circuit judge to Gotham General at voila! The lovely and talented Celeste Delmonico has her choice of seats inside ten minutes. Was there anything else, Finchley? You animate goose dropping. No, I... Uh, that's all, Mr. Copperpot, sir. Good. <laughs> then get to work coordinating with the chief of security. See that he replaced the man the cat took out. Mm -hmm, I will. You better. The streets of this burg are positively crawling with sanitarium escapees. And this place looks like Gotham Central Station. I mean, who are all these people? <laughs> what does he have to do with me? And Hugh Lolly. You! Who are you? What are you here for, young lady? <laughs> Um, ice delivery? Oh, ho, oh, the ice woman cometh, eh? What's cometh? Who says cometh? Why are you standing around aimlessly, young lady? I'm talking on the phone. Like, I delivered your ice, which, you're welcome, and then I had to make a call. Is that, like, some terrible catastrophe for you? What? What did you just say to me? Mr. Copperpot, sir. Eventually again, but I'm... I need you right away. The caterer, he doesn't have the... Do I have this right? The sea elephant gonads you discussed? What? That putrid sardine. I promised gonads on toast. By damnation and one way or another, I will have gonads on toast. Get out of my way. Anyway, sorry, Eddie. You're so right. Penguin is aggro. What was I saying? Oh, yeah, the special ice is delivered or whatever. I didn't have any problem scoring it from Scarecrow Gang either. Autumn says, this one's free, then the next one's gonna cost us. Oh, and Autumn says Scarecrow says hi. I 
think you should call him, Ed. You don't have any friends and it's sad. Like, get some friends and stop reading riddle books or whatever. Eddie, it's like so easy to just not be weird. Okay, what else? Oh, that's it. Tuesday out. He's a remorseful clown. He's a contrite clown. He's a discontinuing a poorly thought out promotion clown. He's, He's Blabbo, Blabbo the, the birthday, birthday clown. clown. And the best we can say is he doesn't get a lot of sleep living in his car, so his judgment is not great. Of course you should call the police if you see an unfamiliar clown poking around your home. It was irresponsible for Blabbo to suggest otherwise. Blabbo will be immediately discontinuing this promotion. Blabbo, the birthday clown, he's defeated, okay? Whatever happens to him next is your fault, people. Gotham, watch your step on the red carpet. The ambulance is on its way. Time for another tale of life and death in Gotham City. The Iceberg Casino, a semi-frozen engineering marvel afloat in busy Gotham Harbor. Tonight, it hosts the biggest of its trademark spectaculars, the Ice Age Gala. For this year's fete, proprietor Oswald Cobblepot has acquired the world's most complete woolly mammoth carcass, frozen in a titanic block of ice. And tonight, he unveils it for a packed house. The beautiful people of Gotham have turned out, as has the insatiable press. Give me a level, Jack. <coughs> I'm Jack Ryder, Ryder. I'm Jack Ryder, live with Oswald Cobblepot. Cobblepot, check one, two, check one. Got it, we're live in 30 seconds, boss. Thanks, Mickey. You know, Mr. Cobblepot, I consider myself a serious journalist, not a gadabout, but I always love covering your extravaganzas. I'm not gonna lie, you're a heck of a gracious host. And you are a talented broadcaster, Mr. Ryder. How do you like your whiskey? <laughs> well, I... Should have waited until we wrap, but I'm no dummy. Oswald C. offers you a snort from his private birdbath. You, uh, you take it. I'll send you a case of the stuff. Enjoy it with my compliments, Mr. Ryder. Though, watch yourself with the bird business. <laughs> I'll assume this time it was the Kentucky Sour Mash talking. And we're on in four, three... Good evening, folks. Jack Ryder live for Gotham City One. I'm here at the fabulous Iceberg Casino for Oswald Cobblepot's spectacular Ice Age Gala. The wait staff are decked out like kooky cavemen. Ice sculptures are everywhere, and here with me is the man himself, the fella with the umbrella, looking as dapper as always, Mr. Cobblepot. <laughs> You're a flatterer, Mr. Ryder. I always try to look best for my city. Now, it's Gotham City's worst-kept secret that under that enormous drop cloth is a strange visitor from prehistoric times? Really? And wherever did you hear that? Well, a little birdie told me. What? And security is high. Folks, we're joined by Gotham City Police Commissioner James Gordon. Commish, are you expecting trouble tonight? Well, Mr. Cobblepot is a prominent businessman. Prominent, legitimate businessman. And there are always threats phoned in to an event this big. But my men are on the scene, and the Batman is patrolling the harbor in his personal watercraft. Everyone's quite safe here tonight. That's great, Commissioner. I have no reason to think you're lying, but be straight with me and the people of Gotham. Why are you leading us all naked and screaming to the Joker's killing floor? I'm sorry, what you talking? Tell us the truth. Isn't the Joker going to grab every one of us by the ankles and dunk us over and over into a sucking pit of madness until we beg for the privilege of a gun barrel in our mouths? What's wrong with you? What does the Joker have to- He has everything to do with everything! Why haven't you people caught him? Isn't that why I pay my taxes? He's just out there, and no one seems to care! Oh! Oh my god, was that laughter? Oh! Did you hear? Is he here? Is the Joker here? Get a hold of yourself, man. This is live TV. Somebody help this man. He's convulsing with fear. Commissioner, we have a serious situation. Robin, what's going on? Robin's here? I knew it. He's after the Joker. Someone out there called the military. The Joker may be on the premises. He's assisting me with security, Ryder. What's wrong with him, Robin? He's been dosed with low-potency scarecrow drugs. Scarecrow drugs? We screened the entire... It's trace amounts, in the ice cubes. Inert until it combines with alcohol. 
Well, then everybody here... Every single person who's had a drink from the bar tonight is going to start experiencing a low-grade panic attack. Well, it doesn't get any worse than a mass poisoning from scarecrow drugs. Oh, my God, folks. I am just getting word that a cruise ship is about to collide with the casino. Did he say cruise ship? What's going to collide with the casino? Why does it matter? We're all going to die. Well, I stand corrected. It can get much worse. Get the camera on the harbor, Mickey, for God's sake. Get the camera on the harbor. Oh, dear Lord, it's true. Look at that ship. Suddenly, the loudspeakers on the massive ship crackle to life. What's this? A runaway Gotham Starliner about to hit an iceberg and kill a bunch of wealthy snots? Riddle me this. How would one describe the scale of such a maritime disaster? Would one say colossal, gargantuan, gigantic? Help me out, folks. I'm trying to work around copyright laws here. It's a mayhem here at the Iceberg Casino. The woolly mammoth is being forklifted out of here. Cavemen are stampeding. Some or all of this might be hallucinations because I'm apparently tripping hard. But one thing's not a hallucination. This reporter's getting the hell out of here before the Joker sees inside me, growing into tiny jokers. And then all the tiny jokers crawl out of my mouth and chew my face off. I'm Joe Ryder, Joker City One. Stay tuned for the latest developments in this ongoing story of life and death in Gotham City. To be continued. Batman, the audio adventures. Written and directed by Dennis McNicholas. Based on the DC comic Batman. Created by Bob Kane with Bill Finger. Based on characters from DC Comics. With performances by Jeffrey Wright, Ike Barinholtz, Rosario Dawson, Heidi Gardner, John Leguizamo, Seth Meyers, Bobby Moynihan, Chris Parnell, Paula Pell, Katie Rich, Ben Rogers, Pete Schultz, Brent Spiner, Keenan Thompson, Alan Tudyk, Melissa Villasenor, Ray Wise, Anna Crow, Erica Phillips, Rosie Phillips, Tony Phillips, Zoe Phillips. Executive produced by John Berg. Executive produced by Killian Van Rensler, Deborah Henderson, and Jordana Freyberg. Produced by Dennis McNicholas. Produced by Angela Petrella. Music by Doug Bossy. Sound recording, design, and mixing by Big Yellow Duck. Sound design, mixing, dialogue editing, and re-recording mixing by Chris Gibney. Production manager, Kay Tinder. Post supervisor, Deanna Saracino. Writer's assistants, Trey Woodard and Scott Weinstein. Additional sound recording by Iceman Audio. Production legal, Jordan Rock. Production accounting, Reva Jones and Stephen D. Smith. Original songs by Doug Bossy and Tony Phillips. Special thanks, Bill Weinstein and Brian Besser. Production services provided by Insurrection Media. The characters and events depicted in this podcast are fictional. Any similarity to any actual person living or dead, or to any actual events, firms, places, and institutions or other entities is coincidental and unintentional. This podcast is protected under the laws of the United States and other countries, and its unauthorized duplication, distribution, or exhibition may result in civil liability and criminal prosecution. Country of first publication, United States of America. Batman, the audio adventures. Copyright 2019, Warner Brothers Entertainment Incorporated. Batman and all related characters and elements are trademark and copyright DC Comics. All rights reserved.